it's radiobiological basis of fractionated radiotherapy in head and neck cancer and clinical results as this class is uh, for the students i will keep it very very basic so we'll start with the basics and we'll discuss a little bit of evidence of whatever is available in head and neck cancer actually there are lots of publications are there in head and neck ordered fractionation so if you search in the internet there, there will be lots because people are trying uh, different type of fractionations for decades so i'll just highlight the important one before that i'll discuss the basic radiobiology of fractionation and then in head and neck cancers what are the dose fractionations we are using what is conventional and what is altered fractionation and what are the evidence we have in favor or against altered fractionation in head and neck cancer so this chart this chart you have been seeing since you have joined a radiation oncology department so this is there are two curves so one is the probability of tumor control and another is probability of complication so what we want is the entire radiation oncology is actually a balance between these two tumor control and complication so we want to deliver as much dose as possible to the tumor to control its growth or to cure it while we want we need to minimize the probability of normal tissue complication so we want to separate these two curves as much as possible so radiation oncology is actually a balancing game between these two tumor control and complication probability let us revise our basic radiobiology knowledge what are the four hours of radiotherapy you must be knowing four hours of radiotherapy the first one is reoxygenation that you know that every damage that radiation radia that radiation causes or x ray causes to the cell or the dna needs oxygen to fix the damage so hypoxic cells are actually resistant to radiation so we need to provide oxygen to the cells to fix the damage that we do to the dna double helix second one is repopulation that once you hit a target or a tumor cell the cell with radiation the cells will repopulate they will start dividing and they will repopulate they will grow in numbers to some extent that is repopulation then reassortment as we know that in cell cycle there are uh, there are some phases where the cell is more sensitive to radiation and there are few phases where the radiation sensitivity is less like the most sensitive phase is the g2m phase and the s phase is relatively resistant to radiation so as the cell moves in the cell cycle and comes to g2m phase that is the most radio sensitive phase and if you can hit the cell at that phase with radiation the cell damage or the kill will be maximum the fourth one is repair there is an inherent mechanism in every cells that if the damage is not lethal if the damage is sub lethal or potentially lethal cell can repair itself i'll explain what is sub lethal damage and what is potentially lethal damage so these four hours of radiotherapy is the most important thing that everyone needs to know a student of radiation oncology needs to know to understand dose fraction so what do you actually do with fractionating the radiotherapy dose so by fractionating we spare the normal tissue because as i have told that the sub lethal damage gets repaired between the two fractions and we allow a little bit of repopulation of the cell and we increase the damage to the tumor because we allow sufficient time for reoxygenation so the hypoxic cells they get oxygen re oxygenation is a separate chapter i'm not going into detail of it but just i am telling that it gets oxygen and the cell damage becomes permanent 
and also we give adequate time so that the cells they just move in the cell cycle and come into the most sensitive phase that is the G2. So by fractionation, two things we are doing. We are allowing time for the sublethal damage for normal tissues and we are allowing oxygenation of the tumor cells to maximize the cell kill. We are allowing the tumor cells to move into the cell cycle and come to G2M phase where the cell kill is minimum. These are the benefits that we are getting. So this is the survival curve, cell survival curve. And as you see, can you, uh, uh, my cursor is not, is it visible, my cursor? So as you see, there are two curves. One is, one is a curve with a very narrow shoulder. Another is a curve with a broader shoulder. So the above curve is the curve for late responding tissues or the tissues which has low alpha y beta. So there are two types of cell kill. One is one we call alpha kill, which is linear, which is proportional to the dose. Another we call is a beta cell kill. Beta cell kill is the proportional to the square of the dose. So the early responding tissues, they are more sensitive to the alpha kill or the linear component of the kill. And the late responding tissues, they are more component to the more sensitive to the beta cell kill. So actually, we have, this is the gap between the two curves is the window of opportunity. Here, as you can see, the cancer cell kill is more than the normal, late reacting normal tissue cell kill. So this is actually our window of opportunity. We need to exploit this window. In this, if we can repeat this window in multiple times, we'll be able to kill the tumor cells while we can protect the normal tissues. And that is actually our target. So head and neck cancer, alpha y beta for head and neck cancer, as you all know, is around 10. So alpha component is proportional to the dose, as I have told, and beta component is proportional to the square of the dose. What is alpha by beta? A little bit about it. Alpha by beta is the dose where the alpha cell kill and beta cell kill are equal. So it is the dose. If alpha by beta is more, that means the numerator is more. That is the alpha cell kill is more and the denominator is less. So the beta cell kill is less. If the alpha is by beta is less, then it means that the beta component is more, the denominator is more, and the numerator is less. So the beta component of cell kill is more. So for head and neck, it is 10. For normal tissues, we assume it is around two or three. That means alpha head and neck cancer alpha by beta, alpha kill is more for tumor cells, and for normal tissues, the beta component is more. Now, now just imagine that you need to clear the weeds in your garden. So weeds are rapidly growing. You need to do it repeatedly. And these are, for doing this, you use an instrument, something like this. You don't use an ax to clear the weeds because there are two reasons. One is you need this multiple, with multiple tools, this kind of instrument, because if you can do it with using an axe also, but then you will be wasting lots of your energy if you need to cut each and every weed with the axe. And there is also a chance that you can injure the surrounding plants and trees that you don't want to destroy. So for clearing the weeds, if we compare the weeds as rapidly growing cells or the tumor cells, you need to do multiple heats but with small energies, not with very high energy. And you need to do it repeatedly. Whereas to cut a tree, you can't cut a tree with this instrument. You need an ax to cut a tree because the blow should be more and more powerful. So if you consider the late responding tissues as trees, 
you need to cut the trees the blow should be much much more than the blow that you need to clear the weeds now suppose when you clear the weeds you see after few days there will be growth again because there will be some weeds that are completely killed and there will be some weeds that are partially killed and they grow again so that is called sublethal damage and the sublet if there is partial uh, injury to the weeds it can grow again after some time so that is the sublethal damage repair now consider you have uprooted all the weeds cleared it but did not remove it and you went for a vacation for 7 days and you know that it will dry up and when when you come back you will remove it but that night it rains and when you come back you see that the weeds have grown again so that is actually a potential lethal damage that means it is actually it will dry if you don't alter the environment but if you alter the environment in favor of its survival it can survive so that is a potentially lethal damage similarly in trees also if you consider late responding tissue if you can't if you don't cut the tree completely it will grow again so it will repair the sublethal damage even if you cut the tree completely you might see the same sir coming out from the tree stem that is remaining because if you water it properly if it is a it is in a uh, area where there is too much of rain it can grow so these are to understand what is lethal damage what is sub lethal damage and what is potential lethal damage i have given you this example so remember this for rapidly growing uh, cells we need small multiple hits but for responding tissues with low alpha beta beta we need less hits but more power powerful hits now fractionation what we actually do with fractionation so with fractionation we actually replicate the shoulder of the cell survival curve because as we know the alpha component is more in rapidly growing cells and beta component is more in late responding tissue so for rapidly growing cells if we can replicate the shoulder that means we are using the alpha cell kill more than the beta kill so that we can kill more and more tumor cells while we can protect the normal structures so in between the two exposures between the two radiation exposures the recovery takes place sublethal damage gets recovered for normal tissues and it acts as a fresh target and between this time the tumor cells also re gets reoxygenated and the cell kill is much much more so that is what the fractionation does fractionation does repeat the shoulder of the cell survival curve increase the alpha repair alpha kill and reduces the beta cell kill so let us read a little bit of history i find this is quite interesting part of fractionation how this fractionation and everything the standard fractionation and other things they evolve this you all know this is ron jens photo and he discovered in november uh, this uh, uh, 1895 he discovered okay. so uh, just after discovering the x ray in january 29 1896 he age prove he was a vacuum tube manufacturer in chicago use this new rays therapeutically for the first time and he told that he has treated a breast cancer patient with a single exposure take rays for 1 hour so it is a bit controversial because some people they do not agree to that but this is the record that is found in the internet or in the literature that he claimed that has treated the first patient just after discovering the x ray as you can see 
within few months only he has reported then in austria there was a dermatologist theophil front he also observed that pileation can happen after age and in 1896 only he treated a patient with hair in ivers a five year old girl has hair in ivers in in her back entirely as you can see all over her back there is hair in ivers and he treated this girl fractionated radiotherapy probably this is the first report of fractionated radiotherapy to cure some clinical condition and it was in medical university vienna in 1914 just a minute in 1914 a austrian radiologist got well first he suggested that the multiple doses would be more effective because the time of greater radio sensitivity was the time of mito so there is a little bit of idea about the radio sensitive phase of cell cycle in 1918 pring and frederick showed that the dose necessary to produce the same skin reaction had to be increased by multiple fractions were used rather than just one so then they didn't have any good dosimetric evidences dosimetric method so how they used to calculate the dose just by the skin reaction so if there is adequate skin reaction that means there is adequate dose has been delivered okay the early fractionation story the first successful treatment of cancer or met with fractionated radiotherapy it was not actually deliberately intentional at that time the extra machine that they had they had a low output device they didn't have a high output device so they had to fractionate each and every treatment because suppose if they want to give a particular dose to a particular tumor they have to fractionate it because you cannot give that much of dose in one fraction but slowly the machine improved and it became able to give adequate dose in single fraction and when it happened very interesting thing took place so there was for the following 10 year there are actually two schools of thought so we have machine which actually can give radiation in single fraction and previously people are giving radiation in multiple fraction and that was the practice so who are the two schools one is erlangen school that is in germany another is paris school so in erlangen school there was a group of uh, radiation i will not call radiation oncologist probably radiologist so wins was the leader of the group so they considered that fractionated radiotherapy is actually weak and primitive so their rationale for single fraction radiotherapy was based on the intervention of bargoni and pipandu's law of radiation sensitivity as far as i remember we had a short note on this bargoni and pipandu's law in any of the exam mg or gn exam or any test case. so what this law says concludes that It is easy to understand that bronchial radiation destroys tumor without destroying the healthy tissue. Therefore, it appeared that there was an inherent advantage of bronchial radiation that might be lost if cancer cells were allowed time to recover. So you don't allow any time to recovery of the cancer cell, and as much dose as possible you keep in a filter. Prince and his colleague argued that recovery from radiation injury depends on cellular metabolism. A rapidly growing tumor cell is better able to affect recovery from injury than a connective tissue. We are correct in that. Therefore, the difference in recovery will favor the tumor if 
cancelled subtle dose is not applied in the first impact so in the first go you have to give as much dose as possible this view of radiotherapy remained popular into 1920 but increasing evidence of superior outcome with fractionation gradually eradicated this method until the introduction of radiotactic radio surgery several decades later now what the paris school said in 1930s there was an experiment by rigo and colleagues in france so in paris they did an experiment with the rams testis they considered the testis of a ram is stimulating a tumor cell or a rapidly growing cell and the skin of the testis testis is actually the dose limiting normal dose So what they saw is, if they if they want to sterilize the ram, that is the normal cells of the testis, with single fraction there will be too much skin damage. Without causing much skin damage, the same thing can be done if you fractionate the dose to deliver the dose in multiple fractions. So that is the experiment. After that. Henrik Hudert published this article in the Lancet. So one or two lines I'll read about this article is quite interesting. If the total dose or the daily dose or the intensity per minute has been too high, if the field has been too large in relation to the doses, or if the filtration or tension has been too low, the connective tissue may be modified. the nutrition see everything is not correct but few things that is told at that time is actually correct the nutrition of the epithelial cells has become difficult the cellular radio sensitivity seems to be linked up to up not only with the usefulness of the cells but above all with the activity of their interchanges with the vascular connectivity that means they are telling a little bit about reoxygenation still about rapidly growing cells is modified so their interchanges with the vascular connective tissue their relation is modified often diminish that means probably they are talking about oxidation and sometimes suppress the cancer cell behave critically as if they had become insensitive to the irradiation alongside the energy factor considered originally as the sole factor or at least essential to the exit therapy of cancer the daily repetition of radiation in doses either uniform or unequal and the increase in the number of days of the treatment have provoked a second factor that is the time factor so repetition of the dose and the total treatment time they have introduced this factor time factor what is the summary of the paper but this paper is it is also not freely available you have to find it in the internet from some website or you need to get it from somewhere so in 1936 paper in lancet i have the paper i can share it the two principal factor in exit therapy are the energy and the time they must be considered in their relation to the cancer cells on the one hand and on the other hand to the vascular connective tissue and the general tissue of the site from which the cancer is developed here telling something about the radio sensitivity something about reoxygenation something about time and fractionation so beginning in 1919 to the treated incurable head and neck tumors with fractionated low dose radiotherapy his method was designed to mimic the low doses radium technique of rigo the international congress of otology in paris in 1922 rigo putard and hoten presented six patient with advanced carcinoma of the larynx treated by radiation therapy and now free of disease this was the first time radiation therapy was shown to be an independent specialty practice not by the surgeons but by the radiation therapies so kutter reported cures but also described reactions of skin and mucosa showing that they depended 
for specific doses on the total duration of the treatment. So, how the standard vaccination evolved? In 1937, Backless, he took over from Cooter in the Puri Institute in Paris. He further extended treatment time to avoid the severe reaction seen by Cooter. So, it was a trial and error method actually. So, limiting the daily dose to two day per fraction and protracting treatment over six to seven weeks. So data from patients treated between 1919 and 1947 suggests that the best outcome was seen in those receiving treatment over this time frame, as opposed to longer or shorter time period. This technique was exported to USA around this time. So this is the two day per fraction and six to seven weeks treatment fractionation we are still using in our clinical practice. In contrast to the technique, or those developed in Manchester by Peterson. As you know, the NHS Trust in UK, they are very, very meticulous about using their resources. So due to the usual pressure in NHS to have with beds and equipments, because they take care of everything of the patient and the welfare of the state is state sponsored. So treatment time was very, very important. If you treat for six or seven times, for NHS, the burden is more. So what they did is the treatment time was shortened to three weeks with corresponding drop in the total dose to compensate for larger fraction size. They, what they did is they actually decreased the total duration of treatment number of fraction and increased the dose per fraction. So this is called Manchester technique. It was popular in Commonwealth in contrast to Paris technique, which is a two gray per fraction technique, which was popular in continental Europe and in the US. Let us, after the history, let us go back to our dose fractionation. So we discuss repopulation for surviving fractions, repair of sublethal damage, sparing of normal tissues by these two mechanisms, and increased tumor damage by deoxygenation of hypoxic cells, redistribution of cells along cell cycles. So this is the four hours of radiotherapy that we have already discussed. Now, what is fractionation? Standard fractionation or conventional fractionation, I have already told that is two gray per fraction, five fractions per week, six to seven weeks. And what is alter or modified fractionation? Anything, anything other than the standard or conventional fractionation is actually altered fractionation. So what are the types of altered fractions? It can be hyperfractionation, increasing the total number of fractions and giving less dose per fraction, usually using two times a day. Or it can be accelerated fractionation. Accelerated means you give the total dose in less number of total time, I mean less number of weeks. That means the total treatment, overall treatment time you reduce. Whether the pure acceleration, they usually do not decrease the dose. Or it can be continuous hyperfractionated accelerated radiation therapy or CART. That means the radiation is given continuously, no break in weekends. It is hyperfractionated given more than one fraction per day and less uh, amount of dose per, uh, per fraction while decreasing the total treatment time. So it is continuous, it is hyperfractionated. It is accelerated, so it is called chart radiotherapy. Hypofractionism: you reduce the number of fractions and give more dose per fraction, which is becoming popular nowadays because of our improved dose delivery system, improved tumor localization system, and improved machines and computers and other aging modalities. Another is split course radiotherapy, usually people when they started accelerating the dose they saw that they, they thought that there can be too much of reaction if you reduce the treatment time too much so let us give give some break in between the treatment usually give some dose rapidly then give two weeks breaks in between and give the rest of the dose after that and the next one is concomitant boost. As we know that with the shrinking field technique, we give a bigger volume, some dose, then we reduce our volume and give boost to the, where there is gross tumor on fire, we feel that we need to give much more dose. 
So rather than giving boost sequentially or reducing the field, people try to give it along with the initial planning. That is in the evening, we give the boost treatment, we reduce the, the, the fraction size a little bit to reduce the chance of reactions and give the boost in the evening. And the last one is simultaneous integrated boost. So people have seen that concomitant boost is actually helpful. Now we have IMRT method. Now we can actually give differential dose to the differential uh, areas. That was not possible before, now, before IMRTs. We have to give equal dose or uh, same dose to the uh, designed field. But now in the same field, we can actually give differential doses. So in some areas we can give high dose, in some areas we can give low dose. So rather than giving concomitant boost or giving another fraction in the evening, now we can actually design the plan, plan so that in the same treatment fraction, we can give more dose to a particular area and less dose to a bigger area. That is called simultaneous integrated boost. So standard fractionation, I have told 1.8 to 2 gray per fraction daily, single fraction per day, five fractions a week, total dose 50 to 70 gray, depending on the clinical situation. Total treatment type, five to seven weeks, and the basis is empirical. I have already told how this standard fractionation thing evolved. And now altered fraction. This alpha beta I have already told, so we, rapidly growing cells, we want to repeat the alpha cells. So if you hyperfractionate, then what happens is if you give adequate interval between two fractions, you allow the sublethal damage to repair, allow the cells to get oxygenated and to give small, small doses. So you repeat the alpha kill, you repeat the shoulder multiplier. So the same thing when we started two gray per fraction, the same thing we can also it increase the effectivity if we hyperfractionate it. So that is the rationale between. And I'm not going into the detail. I've already discussed for alpha beta what is uh, the comparison between high alpha beta and low alpha beta. High alpha beta rapidly proliferating, alpha beta more than five, and low alpha by beta issues are actually slowly proliferating, usually less than five high alpha beta will have short doubling time. Potential doubling time for head and neck cancer is around 4.5 days. That means if you prolong your treatment too much, there will be adequate time for the cells to repopulate. For low alpha beta, the larger potential doubling time, like breast, 10.4 days. And high alpha beta repopulate on treatment, whether low alpha beta does not repopulate on treat, uh, treatment, High alpha by beta is sensitive to rate of dose accumulation. That is the overall treatment time. I already told you, if you increase the overall treatment time too much, there will be repopulation. And if you decrease the overall treatment time, if there is a high alpha by beta normal tissues, then there will be too much of reaction. But low alpha by beta is actually sensitive to dose per fraction. You remember I told about the X. So we need higher blows. So dose per fraction is important for low alpha by beta and interfraction time. That is, you need to give adequate time to repair the sublethal damage. And high alpha beta has short latent period and low alpha beta has longer latent period. So what will be beneficial for high alpha beta? Hyperfractionation or acceleration. And low alpha by beta, hyperfractionation should be beneficial. Now, these are some alpha beta values of different, different uh, uh, tissues. Like skin, it will it is around 8.8 .8 for erythematous. It is good to remember because in exams also the examiner might ask you this. Whereas in cancer cells for head and neck, it is around 10.5 for different parts of head and neck. The alpha by beta has been estimated differently. I have given the reference of uh, all the uh, trials that uh, all the articles that have shown this uh, alpha by beta issue for different. So what will be the choice of fractionation from head and neck? So far we have uh, we have read about the radiobiology of fractionation. So now you can easily understand as the alpha by beta for head and neck is higher, than 10 or greater. So it should be benefited if we use high 
or whereas for the tumors for alpha by beta ratio is less like the prostate cancer or the breast cancer the hyper fractionation can be a benefit altered fractionation hyper fractionation it is more than one small fraction per day spares the late effects because we are giving small uh, amount of radiation per fraction improves total control through redistribution and reoxygenation already uh, discussed it gets time for reoxygenation it gets time to uh, move the cell in the same cycle and come to g2m phase and with accelerated fractionation we reduce the treatment time to overcome repopulation because if we prolong the treatment time too much there will be repopulation and we do not expect change of late effect because we are not increasing dose per fraction what we are doing is we are just reducing the overall treatment time hyperfractionation is large dose per fraction but there is concern of late effects the conventional fractionation five fractions per week you give in phases initially you give on phase 1 suppose that five uh, five weeks of treatment then you reduce the volume and give boost for rest of the times weeks of treatment for accelerated fractionations rather than giving two days break on saturday sundays you treat on saturdays so that you give six fractions per week and reduce the overall treatment time and see the white bar white bar is actually the treatment time so acceleration can be done by giving seven fractions also there is a gotek trial and there are other trials also we are given seven fractions per week also now you can accelerate reduce the treatment time as you see the white bar you will see a white bar you are reducing white bar is the overall treatment time by reducing the treatment time by concomitant boost rather than giving boost after phase 1 for two uh, phase 1 for uh, or phase 1 for uh, <clears throat> after phase 1 giving two weeks of treatment you give boost in the evening during the rest of during the last part of the treatment usually the accelerated uh, with concomitant boost trials the last 12 fraction they have given boost the smaller volume overall treatment time you can actually reduce and then split course that i have already told hyperfractionated and giving two fractions for hyperfractionated we are not reducing the overall treatment time what we are doing is we are actually giving two fractions per day we are reducing the fraction size we are giving small doses but giving two treatments per day but we are giving five days a week we are maintaining the overall treatment time and hyperfractionation as you know is actually giving higher dose per fraction as reducing the overall treatment time now i'll discuss few landmark trials in altered fractions you know head and neck cancer there are so many articles published so many trial happened but this is the thing that radiation oncology uh, everywhere in the world is are doing they are altering the fraction size they are trying to change the overall treatment time trying to give more doses per day and just to see what is the effect we, we are trying to find the optimum radio biology of the tumor cell and we are trying to balance what i already told between the tumor control probability and the late tissue complication probability we want to give high dose to the tumor by reducing the toxicity to the normal structures so this is the landmark trial urtc 22791 at least 1990 this one you have to read so this is a randomized control trial of 356 patients p2 p3 n0 n1 less than 3 cm and non metastatic oropharyngeal carcinoma but they have excluded the base of the trunk there are two arms one is conventional fractionation that you already know 70 degree 35 fraction 7 weeks and another arm is hyperfractionation what have they have done 80 gray 80.5 gray in 70 fractions in 7 weeks 1.15 gray two treatment per day with adequate spacing and what they have seen they have seen is there is significantly higher local control with a p value of 0.02 in 
higher fractionation than in conventional fractionation now 59% versus 40% and for t3 patients t3 n0 t3 n1 patients the improvement is significantly more the local control is significantly more but it is not true for t2 patients and there was an improved survival but it was not significant in hyperfractionation arm so you must be uh, curious to know the side effects so similar late effects in both arms and higher acute side effects in hyperfractionation arm so then there was another landmark trial that's the rtog 9003 but so they have they had multiple arms and 1133 patients so they had one conventional fractionation arm they had one hyperfractionation arm 81.6 grain 68 fractions 1.2 gray and two dose per day then they had uh, accelerated fractionation 67.2 gray two fractions per day 42 weeks six weeks and they have given two week rest after 38.4 gray and another arm with accelerated fractionation with concomitant boost 72 gray in 42 fractions in six weeks and 1.8 day in the morning and last 12 fraction they have given concomitant boost 1.5 day in the evening so what they have seen that <clears throat> the multiple arms the higher fractionation is significantly better low original control than the standard fractionation and in axillary fractionation with concomitant boost they also have significantly better low original control than the standard fractionation but for split force it is not significant but as disease free survival though it is more in hyper fractionation or axillary fraction with concomitant boost but statistically it was not significant the so results were patient treated with hyper fraction is the articular accelerated with concomitant boost start improved local regional control trends towards improved overall survival although it was not significant there was increased acute toxicity is accelerated fractionation now but no altered fractionation now but no difference in late toxicity so then the most important trial on accelerated fractionation is the dahanka 6 and 7 randomized control trial so 1485 patient they had treated and in two arms one is a conventional fractionation now and another is a accelerated fractionation what they have done is they have given six fractions per week they have seen that the local original control is much better for six fractions per week than five fractions per week and it is more as you can see the forest plot for glottic and subglottic it is significantly better and for t1 t2 it is better so early glottic and subglottic accelerated fractions are actually doing better Overall, five-year local original control rates are seventy percent and sixty percent for a six fraction and five fraction group, and it was statistically significant. So, six compared five fraction per week improved preservation of voice in patient with laryngeal cancer, eighty percent versus sixty-eight percent. Disease-specific survival also improved, seventy-three percent versus sixty-six percent, but not overall survival. Acute morbidity was significantly more frequent with six than five fraction, but it was transient. That is manageable. So the whole benefit of shortening the treatment time was seen for primary tumor control, but not significant for net node control. That is also an important finding. Then there is another very big study that IAEA ACC study and India also participated in this trial. You can see uh, Professor J.P. Agarwal and Professor uh, Bidu Kollan Mohanty and Dr. Shimon Bhaskar's name are there. A All India Institute and TMH, they participated in this trial. This was head and neck cancer of larynx, pharynx and oral cavity who are eligible for curative treatment, 908 patient, 452 or included for analysis in six fractions per week term and 448 for conventional fractionation.
one minute. What they found is local regional control was significantly greater for patients in accelerated schedule group, 42% versus 30% at five year, which is statistically significant P value. And then disease free survival was also improved in accelerated arm, 50% versus 40%, and <clears throat> improved overall survival in accelerated arm, that is 35% versus 28%. This P value was not significant. Then came the meta analysis, the most important meta analysis every regional college student should be. That is, hyperfractionate or accelerated radiotherapy in head and neck cancer, March meta analysis. So, in 15 randomized control trials, 6,515 patients were included, mostly oropharynx and larynx. 5,221 patients had stage 3, 4 disease. That is, 74% were locally advanced head and neck cancers. Trial were categorized into hyperfractionated, accelerated, and accelerated with total dose reduction. What they have seen? They have seen that the local ROCO regional control is significantly better in hyperfractionation significantly better in altered fractionation without total dose reduction. Is that I told the Dahan trial, the trial that have in here, that have used the dose they have not reduced, but only they have reduced the overall treatment. Time. But accelerated fractionation with total dose reduction was not significant. And overall it favored altered fractionation. And in death, for death also, it is better in hyperfractionation, that survival is better in hyperfractionation, but it was not significant in accelerated fractionation. Findings are increased absolute overall survival at five years, 3.4% with fractionation, more benefit with hyperfractionation, that is 8%. Local regional control favored altered fractionation, 6.4% more efficient in local than in nodal. Here also they have said that local is better than the nodal. Benefit is younger population. So they concluded that altered fractionation improves survival, head and neck and hyperfractionation has greatest benefit. So these are some randomized control trial. I have put these slides because if someone wants to read the randomized control trials, of accelerated radiotherapy, different trials of accelerated radiotherapy regimen, they can read all these articles. So this is the list of meta-analysis and trials for conventional and hyperfractional radiation. What is that March meta-analysis? There is uh, article RTOG 9003 we have discussed. There is another meta-analysis by Budak. There is some other articles. And these are meta-analysis trials of conventional versus accelerated fractionation. Someone wants to read, they should read all these articles and trials. So there are also phase three trials of concurrent chemotherapy and altered fractionation. You must be curious by this time that what happens to the chemotherapy thing. There is one trial, Jeremy uh, et al. They have used hyperfractionation with chemotherapy and they have shown that it is better. Hyperfractionation with chemotherapy is better than conventional fractionation without much significant increase. So what we learned so far from March meta-analysis on all these randomized control trials, that the overall survival benefit was significantly higher with hyperfractionation now, 8%. And then in McKinsey meta-analysis that we all know and we all discuss repeatedly, there is absolute survival benefit of concurrent chemotherapy, that is 6.5% at five years, that is now the standard of care for all locally advanced head and neck cancer. And we are all practicing this. In ARTOG 9003 trial, that also hyperfractionation improves survival without increasing less effect. And the survival benefit is quite equivalent to the concurrent chemoradiation as per the meta analysis. So, RT alone, as per altered fractionation R2G 9003, is a reasonable option. So, now you might ask this question. What to do? Should we use conventional concurrent chemoradiation or should we use altered fractionation omitting concurrent chemotherapy? There is an update of March meta analysis that is, you know, the meta analysis is the highest level of evidence. 
concluded 34 trials of 11,969 patients, which is two into two design. That they compared conventional fractionation radiotherapy versus altered fractionation radiotherapy, and or conventional fractionation radiotherapy plus concomitant chemotherapy versus altered fractionation radiotherapy alone. This is the second comparison. Patient with non metastatic squamous cell carcinoma of the oral cavity, oropharynx, hypopharynx, or larynx, who are going first line, curative treatment were included. Median follow up was 10.4 years. What did they find? They found that there is absolute difference of five years with altered fractionation than conventional fractionation. This is the first analysis, the number one analysis. Altered fractionation with conventional fractionation. There is 3.1% absolute benefit of overall survival. Altered fractionation radiotherapy is associated with significant overall survival benefit compared with conventional radiotherapy with an absolute difference at five years of 3.1% and a 10 year of 1.2%. Survival benefit being restricted to hyperfractionated regimen with absolute difference of five year of 8.1% and 10 year 3.9%. That is quite significant. But what about altered fraction of the RT? Was increased associated with increased acute mucositis and they need more feeding tube placement, but no significant difference in late toxicity between conventional and altered fraction radiotherapy. But we are much more interested to know what happened to altered fractionation and concurrent chemoradiotherapy. This forest plot, as you see, they have shown that concurrent chemoradiotherapy arm is better than altered fractionation therapy. Comparison between altered fractionation radiotherapy and concomitant chemoradiotherapy showed the superiority of the addition of concomitant chemotherapy over pure fractionation modification. So, concomitant chemoradiotherapy should remain the standard of care for locally advanced positive tumor. So that is the conclusion. The direct comparison between altered fractionation and competent chemotherapy suggests the superiority of concomitant radiotherapy. And what they suggested is further research is still needed to compare efficacy of therapy and concomitant chemoradiotherapy to look for predictive marker of treatment efficacy. So we might get some more benefit if we add chemotherapy hyperfraction to radiotherapy. Now, the time we, I have, I think I have a little bit of time. I'll discuss a little bit about hyperfractionation. This is the RCR document, Royal College of Radiologists UK document, those fractionation document. They will find in P1, P2 glottic cancer, what are the recommended doses? 63 gate, 28 fraction, 50 gate, 16 fraction, 41 disease only, and 55 gray in 20 fraction. So they are increasing the dose per fraction and they are reducing the total number of fraction and overall treatment type. They are completing the treatment in four or three weeks time. So they have, they are using this, they are practicing this fractions in schedule. So they have adequate data in their hand. They have this Christie and Royal Munster Hospital experience. These are the planning methods, how they have planned for early glottic cancer and 200 patients data. Once daily fractionation, five days a week, where total dose are 50 to 52.5 grains, 16 fraction over 21 days. Fractionation size was 3.12 to 3.28 grains. Five year local control were comparable to other control groups, 93%, which is quite high. And overall survival was 80%, and cost specific survival at five year was 97%, which is quite high. Can I just interrupt you for a while? Yeah. Yes, yes. Very interesting finding for a T1 glottic cancer. Yeah. 80%. I think it's too less. Uh, overall survival 80%. I mean, this is Christy data. This is, a, this is a very old data, 2003 data. Uh, did they did they mention the uh, reason the causes of death in this uh, population? Uh, in the original paper, they have mentioned about each and every patient. If you read that, you will get to know. But they have salvaged many, I think the cost specific survival at five years was 97%, yeah. which is quite high. True. So there is another data. This is a Japanese trial. This is also a landmark trial. So they had two arms. One is two gray for a fraction, another is 2.25 gray for a fraction. 
So usually now this has become a standard practice. We don't use two gear fraction for early glottic cancer. These are all T1, N0, M0 cancers. Five year overall survival rate was 88%. Here you see it is quite better without any significant difference between the two arms. So hyperfraction of the arm, what they concluded is actually safe. It shows overall treatment time is reduced, showed superior local control. Local control in uh, this hyperfraction of the arm was 92% versus 77% in arm A. Because local control is important in glottic cancer because you can always salvage the case by doing a salvage surgery. So overall survival may not be different or cause specific survival may not be different. Local control is very, very important. Local control is better with hyperfraction and arm without in much adverse reaction in if you use greater fractionation. There are other trials also. This is the standard fractionation they are using, 55 grain, 20 fraction. Uh, this, uh, this data also shows that there is uh, good local control. So overall 85.6% and T1A or T1B, T1A it is within 91.8%. So five-year post physical survival and overall survival was 95.7 and 78.8 percent respectively. So this series also demonstrated that the schedule of 55 gray in 20 fraction over four weeks offer higher rate of local control with acceptable uh, long-term toxicity for both T1 and T2 days. This is a standard practice now in UK. They do hyperfractionation for all early glottic cancer. These are some trials. If someone wants to read the trials, they can go through this. We have uh, two important trials. One trial I have discussed, that is the Japanese trial, Imazaki. Another trial I will discuss because that is an Indian trial by Dr. Harvani Madam. The hyperfraction rate is for T1 N0 M0 glottic cancer. That's published in Clinical Oncology in 2012. So there are two groups. One is 50 gray in 15 fraction and 55 gray in 16 fraction. Another was 60 gray and 24 fractions, so 62 gray and 25 fractions, two groups. Both are hyperfractionated groups, but this is more than three gray per fraction, the group one. So radical retrocerpy schedule incorporating a higher dose per fraction, that is 50 gray and 15 fraction, or 55 gray and 16 fraction, in similar local control rates with comparable late toxicity. That is an important finding. So if you can reduce the total treatment time, you can accommodate much more patient. And it is much more convenient for the patient also. So there is another trial. So I think I have one minute's time. I will discuss only one or two trials of simultaneous integrated boost because that is very, very interesting. Nowadays, many people are using this as we are doing IMRT in most of the cases in hedonic cancer. This is an Indian data. This was also published in the journal in 2012 by Dr. Tejpal Gupta. What they have done is, this is a comparison between CTCRT and IMRT, but actually in IMRT arm, they have used simultaneous integrated boost. So, and they have shown this, that IMRT significantly reduces the incidence and severity of xerostomia compared to CTCRT when treated with definitive chemoradiotherapy. So they have shown that it is safe. What I am trying to establish with uh, showing this paper is, SIB compared to the conventional CDCRT, in this article also, we can conclude that yes, it is safe without much toxicity. We can give uh, SIB IMRT, and it reduces the incidence and severity of xerostomia. So there are some other articles also. This is another article of hyper simultaneous integrated boost with 115 patients. They also concluded that the SIP is highly effective and safe. So <laughs> there is a meta-analysis. This meta-analysis, this slide also I have put just to show that what are the trials going on in simultaneous with simultaneous integrated boost. So if someone is interested to read these trials, they can search these articles and go through these trials. So what this meta-analysis actually says, because I don't have time, I have to finish now. Actually, SIB IMRT and sequential IMRT boost can provide comparable outcomes in the treatment of patients treated by head and neck. Both IMRT techniques are to found to carry a similar risk of severe acute effect. SIB IMRT may have advantage due to convenience and short course of treatment. So SIB IMRT is safe. It gives equal results than sequential boost IMRT, and it is convenient. Yes, it is convenient and short course of treatment. 
can actually reduce the treatment. If you give in seven weeks treatment, you can reduce to six weeks. At least one week you can reduce by CBIMR. So thank you very much. If you have any question, you can ask. I think I took uh, three minutes more. You are perfectly on time. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. We started three minutes later. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so there is uh, there were two three questions. Yeah. Uh, so the first question was uh, whether the is there any difference in or expected difference in acute side effects in conventional versus hypofractionation vis-a-vis late -vis side effects. Yeah. So uh, as per the radiobiology, I was not audible in between. No, I was able to listen. You. Okay, okay. Some people could not. Uh, listen. And I there might be some local network, network issues. Okay. So hyperfraction as per the radiobiological knowledge. Why? We are increasing both per fraction. So late complication, late tissue complication should be more rather than the early complication. Because early uh, reacting tissues, they, their alpha by beta is much more. So they will be more sensitive to the to overall treatment time and dose accumulation. That is, if you fraction it and if you give more dose in less uh, period of time, more fractions, they will be sensitive to that. So late reaction should be more if you hyperfraction it. Only red effects, uh, someone has answered. And the second question is, uh, I, any comparison with chem, conventional chemoradiation versus altered fraction is in post-op setting? Uh, I think very interesting question. Very interesting question, yes. Uh, actually, this uh, head and neck uh, symposium I had a few days back. So I was in one of the panel. There was one abstract discussed. They have used uh, seven fractions per week compared to concurrent chemoradiotherapy. Accelerating the treatment with concurrent chemoradiotherapy. But uh, it was a small number of patients was very small. And uh, they, they, what they showed is, is equivalent almost. We are not having much more side effects. Do you remember there was a nice article published somewhere in 2012 by this Gortic group. They compared yeah. conventional Seven. Uh, radiation alone, hyperfractionation, and they compared hyperfractionation with concurrent chemo. Yes, yes, yes. There was and a four-arm study. Right, right. And the Jeremy et al. trial also that is that compared hyperfractionation with chemotherapy. Now, do you remember oh. any study where uh, pure acceleration, that is six days per week, with yeah. concurrent chemotherapy? Excel? No, 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 no. That that is I am also interested to know. Uh, why I am asking? There is a there is a there is a reason. I recently saw a patient being treated this way somewhere. Yeah. So I was. Uh, I just saw it today, so I need to search some article whether is there any such protocol you use a concurrent taxon with accelerated radiation. Yeah, I mean, I, I also could not find, I actually did not search using that because I was concentrating on the alter fractionation only, but that should be an interesting trial. Yeah. But uh, there, I don't think there is any robust data available with that. I also don't think so. Uh, accelerated uh, data, one is that uh, you have that the Hanka, another is the IAEA, IAEA, IAEA data that is uh, from India. We had lots of patients, the AIMS and TMH. They have a significant number of patients' data. These two yes. data are actually the main main uh, articles in accelerated vaccination. Uh, there are a few more questions. Hi, how hypofractionation works in low alpha by beta tissues? Okay, so low alpha by beta tissue, I have to say, I am following my presentation from the beginning. I have yeah. elaborated this, like- Yeah, I think uh, we have already- have, uh, Yeah, I think I already have explained way. this, yeah. yeah. So you can ask why hyperfraction is working in larynx cancer where alpha by beta is high. That question someone asked me, this was my ECRO class, ECRO broadband class in YJAC, and uh, one student asked no, me- That is itself is a fibra structure. Yeah, and uh, that's why I have a low alpha by beta. Yeah, I discussed with Dr. <laughs> Dr. Tejpal, sir. So yeah. I was also like, a bit, uh, yes, that's a valid, valid question. In head and neck cancer, alpha by beta is high, then why hypofraction is working? So he said, I think they are doing some trial in TMH also. 
in this. So, uh, I, I, I did not find any literature on that. I could not also, I don't also know whether there is any published uh, series of alpha by beta, particularly for that glottic, uh -huh. pure glottic tissues. But, uh, but I, I think this is uh, that the mucosa of head and neck is yeah. having a high alpha by beta ratio, but the glottis, pure glot, the, the, the true glottis, that's a fibrous structure. Uh, yeah, there is alpha by beta. Some kind of low alpha by beta ratio. Exactly, that is what Tejpal sir said, and he shared one document also in the group or privately. I don't know. I could not find that. So today morning I tried to contact Tejpal sir to clarify mm. that. I could not contact him. Probably later I will contact and I will post in the group. Uh, anyone having some question, you can unmute yourself and you can ask actually. Uh, thank you for the nice presentation, sir. I have a question from yeah. the update of March meta analysis yeah. where it was seen that the concurrent chemo radiotherapy should be the standard of care yeah. because it True. is more providing bone benefit as compared to the altered fractionation. Right. But right. the few slides back, when we were seeing the percentage of benefit they are giving, we yeah. were seeing that uh, concurrent chemo is giving the OS benefit of around 6.3% while altered fractionation is giving 8.6% benefit. True, true, true. That, that is that is why this the metalysis is all about. So the question was that hyperfractionation is giving 8% absolute benefit, whereas the concurrent chemotherapy therapy is giving 6.5% absolute benefit. So ideally, it should be better. But see, this is a well-designed, well-coordinated meta-analysis, March meta-analysis, the update and the statistics is also was excellent. We cannot question their statistics. So they have incorporated all the um, trials that that are important in this uh, in this scenario, and they have came up with this uh, result. I think we should accept their, their result. Like this. We cannot deny that this is the forest plot. We have to accept this. This is what the statistics is saying. And this C value is significant. You can see the diamond is towards the concurrent chemotherapy. Probably there are other mechanisms also involved. This was discussed in Edernex Symposium also that day. Probably not only local tumor control that is important, there are other mechanisms involved. Maybe with some chemotherapy acts on micrometastasis or there are other. Many people try to eliminate chemotherapy, but they could not. It's still the standard of care concurrent chemotherapy. Okay. Hello. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, it's Gaurav from Ames uh, Rishikesh. I'm asking that there is any role of immunotherapy with radiotherapy in head and neck cancer? In, uh, like in conventional fractionation, if we give concurrent yeah. immunotherapy, Yes. Uh, so there is any trials or any evidence that it uh, show benefit? Benefit of what? With the altered uh, fractionation? Uh, benefit with uh, altered fractionation, with immunotherapy. Uh, with immunotherapy? Immuno yeah. Okay. Immunotherapy trials are going on, many trials. So, but immunotherapy in head and neck, any concrete data with radiation and immunotherapy is not there still there. Yes. Okay. At this point of time, I can tell there is no role of using immunotherapy concurrently in non-metastatic head and neck cancer with radiation. Okay, sir. Any more question? So I think uh, it's a very nice presentation yeah uh, rectum also yes, you, we have a short course rt that is hypofractionation 25 oh, grade high fraction. right right so there alpha by beta how does it work sir? It... yes now that i have told you the evolution of radiation okay how the fractionation thing they evolved how empirically to differ fraction people started using and the radiobiology knowledge of everything our radiobiology knowledge is not complete i'm telling you and the thing is, in rectum, what we are doing is we are giving pre-operative uh, chemoradiotherapy. It is not a curative dose. We are giving pre-operative chemoradiotherapy. We are giving very less dose. 20, 25 mean 5 fraction is, is not a very high dose. It is not a curative dose. So the total dose that we are giving is very less. Our aim is to, our aim is to, there should be some effect in the rectum so that the long-term cure or long-term survival benefit we get. 
So preoperative dose and curative dose, these are different. And the total dose also matters. Total dose here is less. Okay. Another another thing, if you allow me just to add to this one. Yeah. In rectum, sure. after giving the radiation, you are actually removing the rectum. Yes, you are removing the normal structures. And you are not concerned about the side effects of rectum per se. You are considering side effects of bladder probably. And the bladder, bladder, bladder tolerance is much, much higher. Hello. Okay. Any more question? Yes, sir. Uh, sir, one question. Sir. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, Dr. Hanuman, if we have a Sir, any role of uh, altered fractionation or de escalation? Yeah, I could not hear the question. Many any, role of, any role of altered fractionation or de escalation in HPV positive cases? Uh, HPV positive case is very interesting. Eh? All over the world, people are trying to de escalate. There are trials going on, there are data coming to de escalate, but till date, this is not standard. Whether it is HPV positive or HPV negative, oropharyngeal cancer, the standard remains same. Now, at this point of time, we are not in a position to reduce the dose in HPV positive RNA cancer. Maybe later we might get some concrete data, it might happen that we reduce doses. But at this point of time, we cannot reduce those. For HV positive or negative, you give full dose of radiation. Okay. Thank you, sir. Just a yeah. small piece of information. Uh, yeah. 26 yeah. evening, we are yeah. expecting yeah. Professor J.P. Agarwal to yeah. give yeah. insight regarding yeah. this de-escalation yeah. principle. That's great. That's great. The, he is the best person to answer all the questions. You can do one thing now. This is just my suggestion. Uh, that is, uh, I, rather than asking him to present something or prepare some presentation, it can be an open session. Anyone can ask questions. Sir, 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 is, sir is very clear. So he told very clearly he is not going to make a PPT. So he will great, discuss great. like a class where right. he will discuss about the principles. That's great because so talking that the to students him can is, develop a, an understanding of the thing. That's great, but talking so, uh, to him is, is actually is great. You and talk if to him, everything you learn so goes much. by the plan, then we expect him on twenty sixth evening, seven to eight pm. Great, great. great. So I'll also learn. Compared to our uh, conventional timing of eight to nine, there might be some change. It might be seven to eight. So okay, I'll update in the group also. I have already updated sure, sure. some changes. Uh, yes. Sarvani member was supposed to take a class on 20th, but she suddenly has some urgent thing. So it has changed to 29th evening now. Okay. And uh, Ashwini ma'am also had something very urgent. So it was, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. Sarvani ma'am is going to take it on 28th, Sunday. And Ashwini ma'am will take it on Monday 29th. So I posted in the group. Please uh, keep an eye on the uh, information. Okay. Thank you. Very nice talk, Sam. Very nice. Thanks, really sir. Thanks, sir. Yeah. And so many people join. I thank each and everyone. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, yeah. man. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, boss. Amirda, you are also there. Oh, that's great. That's great. Permirda is always there in academic. I am honored. I am honored. I, I, am, I, am honored. I didn't so know nice you were there. I he finds have... time in, among his so busy, busy schedule that. Yes, yes. yes. And he listens. It is so nice, oh, sir. Thanks. Thank thanks a lot, thank uh, Sanvi, sir. Okay, okay, bye, okay. Okay. Good, Good night, night everyone. Good night, everyone. Bye. bye.